Hi, I'm Brent. This is part six of our video upgrade on our billet block uh, engine upgrade. Part one, two, three, four, and five, we talked about turbos. We've spoken about the block assembly, the heads, the porting, the cams, um, the oil pumps, and everything. Have a look at the links at the bottom of this page, and you'll see about it. What we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes is intercoolers. Now, on my previous video, we we're talking about the turbos and how we're going against the trend and we're not running rotated, we're not running front mount. This particular engine is a road car and from what we can tell it's going to be the first billet block assembly uh, road car with a factory located turbo which um, check out the video you'll probably find that very interesting and because we're going factory location turbo we're going factory location top mount intercooler. So what I've got beside me is one of the uh, about a 2008 model STI top man intercooler. Turbo is seated here. If you want to see our fits, have a look at our previous video. Compressed air comes in through the uh, turbo, gets split between the two pipes into the uh, rear tank. And you'll notice a small thing, a lot of people don't notice this, but that there um, keeps the two outlets a little bit separated from each other to encourage the uh, compressed air to be evenly distributed over the intercooler. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's all about getting as much of the heated um, compressed air going through here and cooling it down before it goes into the throttle body and into the engine. Now on this particular model cars they had electronic throttle, different location for that hose assembly and the offset's a little bit different so sometimes it is a bit difficult to fit some of the later model STI intercools onto the earlier model uh, cable throttle Subaru STIs and WRXs but um, check out our other videos and you'll find more about it. But just one thing I do want to touch on, a lot of people don't know this, but see down the bottom inside there where the uh, silicon hose is bolted to the outlet, you'll notice the bottom of the tank is directly, directly level with the bottom of the intercooler. Now the reason being is, is if that was stepped like some other market intercoolers have, um, you always get a little bit of blow-by because you've got the crankcase ventilation system going into the intake that goes through the turbo. You always get a little bit of blow-by through the intercooler. And the intercooler sort of almost acts as a semi-oil um, uh, separator um, before it goes into the engine. And you get a little bit of um, oil being collected out of the compressed air going into the engine, pooling in the intercooler. And as you go around corners, depending on the position of the engine, it might pull in one end, it might pull in the other. Now, if you didn't have that flat part there parallel to the level of the bottom of the intercooler with a step in it, that step artificially creates a almost a bath for the intercooler to collect even more oil um, before it gulps it through the engine. Now, when the engine consumes the oil going in the engine, it doesn't actually hurt it, but what it does is it straight away affects the combustion um, process and the engine will knock a little bit and reduce um, the ignition timing because they've got variable control through ignition through the factory ECU. Of course, if you're running a factory um, ECU with modifications, I'm not an aftermarket ECU. Now, um, I'll tell you this because very, very many years ago we had um, a uh, project car and we had an intercooler on it that didn't have a step in it and it was collecting oil and we had these really good lap times for a couple of laps. Over a period of time, it will build a little bit of oil in the inlet manifold in the intercooler, and then it will take a gulp and it pull the timing out. And all of a sudden, we got this one random bad lap time until it recovered from the um, little bit of knock through the knock control because, of course, it's electronically controlled, blah, 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 and then the engine would recover. Now, I've seen cars with aftermarket top man intercoolers with huge steps in here, and you end up with either a huge collection of oil in the intercooler over a period of time because it just can't get out and when it does get out it gulps it through in a big amount or um, it doesn't get out at all. Now I'm going to show you the replacement MRT intercooler which um, is on this particular engine and you'll notice of course it doesn't have a step inside there as well because we locate the position of the bottom tank parallel with the bottom of the outlet here. Of course it is physically thicker on the top side it's mechanically bigger than the STI of its era, and this particular intercooler has got a step in the back to split the compressor um, area through the top mount. And of course, this intercooler you'll notice is bar and plate as opposed to tube and fin. Now, I'm not going to get into the differences between the benefits and advantages and disadvantages between bar and plate and tube and fin, but I just wanted to talk about not all intercoolers are the same. Just because you change the intercooler doesn't mean you're going to get a massive increase in grunt massive increase in flow. Intercooler design is a real um, challenge with manufacturers, um, factory cars and aftermarket of a balance between 
um, pressure difference between the inlet side and the outlet side, so you don't drop too much boost because if you put 30 psi on this side, you won't get 30 psi out of that side because the air has been pushed through the galleries, which have got a restriction in them because they're designed to take out heat. Now, if you've got a huge ability to get rid of heat, then you might end up with a huge increase in pressure drop. So you might end up with 30. Some intercoolers I've seen, you put you get 20 out of this side. That's a badly designed intercooler. But of course, some intercoolers don't have the ability to get rid of heat, which is what their main design is. So you might put in 30 here and get 29 out here, but it doesn't get rid of the heat. So you need to carefully consider the quality of the intercooler. Just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's a better bargain. Sometimes in a lot of situations, the factory intercooler is the best alternative. And if you've got an STI, the later model MY15 onwards, right up to MY17, MY18, has the same mechanical size, but it's actually physically thicker. Um, and that's the biggest top man intercooler that Subaru ever developed for their cars. Now, of course, this intercooler ultimately will be sitting here on top of the engine. And this ultimately is probably going to be the single biggest restriction in the performance of this engine. But as per my previous video, this is in a road car. The customer wants top man. He doesn't want front man. The car's got air conditioning, all the nice other mod cons. It's a sleeper of a car. And yes, this under full load is probably going to be a restriction in some ways to another. But the client is happy to achieve that and accept it. So there you have a bit of a story about background with intercoolers. Um, out of interest, the very, very first Subarus had a air to water heat exchanger on the old RS Legacies, and then they went to a top man intercooler, which was probably about a third the size of this. And over a period of time, the intercoolers got bigger and bigger and bigger. And as you know, current model WRXs um, are different again, still top man intercooler, but a completely different shape. Check out our other videos, but for now, we're going to do another upgrade um, in the next couple of days where we're going to get all this started putting back together. We'll show you what the engine looks like it's assembled before we put it in the car. Check out our new website. You can put in a search for intercooler, give you a massive drop down, or you can put in um, um, MRT intercooler, you can put in Process West. There's a whole heap of different brands that we offer on our MRT website. Or you can just search. Um, a brand, a GFB, White Line, Process West, and give you a list of all the parts we offer. Of course, you can put in your gear, make, and model as well and find the parts that we cross reference to your model, whether it's Mazda, Mitsubishi, Subaru, Holden, Ford, and all those types of cars. But for now, no matter where you are in the world, I hope this video has helped you learn a little bit more about intercoolers. Stay tuned for our next video update and check out our previous updates on this engine. It's a fantastic build of which we're looking forward to getting on the dyno on the road for our client very soon. But for now, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.